Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Stefan and this is the French Cooking Academy. So if you were here last week, we've learned how to make the famous brown stock using the Escoffier method. And as I said, brown stock is the base of many sauces. Today's exercise is going to consist of transforming that brown stock into a sauce and not any sauce. We're going to transform that brown stock into the famous sauce Espanol. So if you want to learn the origin of the sauce and how to make the Espanol, stay tuned. All right, so let's have a look at this sauce espagnole or espagnole sauce. First, the translation in French, it means the Spanish sauce. Huh? A few facts about that sauce. It is one of the five mother sauces uh, in France. We call them in France actually the great sauces. Why are they called like that? Because they were deemed to be the basis of all sauces. So you could use that sauce on its own or you could use it actually to build upon, add other ingredients and transform it into another sauce. And huh? the same as the bechamel. In terms of history, the uh, king of France, Louis XIV, decided to marry uh, with Marie-Thérèse from Spain, uh, which was the daughter of the king of Spain at the time. And Marie-Thérèse had to move from Spain with all of her stuff, and she moved to the palace in Versailles. But when she arrived there, she didn't arrive on her own. Uh, she had all the servants, uh, the cook, the furniture, and even some produce like oranges and chocolate that were never seen before. And in terms of the sauce, what happened is very simple, uh, is that in the court of Louis XIV, they were eating a lot of meats and there was a lot of brown sauce going around, that kind of brown stock with some meaty taste. And that was about all there was in terms of sauce. And one of the cooks from uh, Maritime, so I'm saying, one of the Spanish cooks said, in my country, I know another way to make it. We can add some things in there, you know, some roux, some flour and butter, some tomatoes, some mushrooms, or other ingredients in there to make it more flavorsome. And they said, the king said, well, make the sauce. And he did, everybody loved it, and it went like wildfire, and they decided to dedicate uh, the name or you know the origin of uh, of that sauce to the, the, the chef that was a Spanish guy yeah? so actually it became the sauce espanol that's for the story now in terms of making it it is very simple we're going to use the brown stock we've made last week and use all of these lovely ingredients we're going to see in detail just now to enhance the flavor and create a really an all-rounder of a sauce now to transform a stock into a sauce like I always said you need flavors because flavoring doesn't come on its own so as you can see here this is what's going to transform our stock into a sauce huh? so we've got some mushroom garlic onion some tomato i'm going to use tomato paste as well some carrots parsley we're going to usually uh, use the stalks flour and butter to make a roux and most importantly some nice smoky bacon <laughs> Before we start cooking, as always, we have to prepare the mise en place, uh, the food preparation in English. And this is what I've made. Always prepare your mise en place before you do anything that's going to make your life much easier. I've got a mirepoix of carrot and onion, some mushroom trimmings that I've prepared. The bacon is diced, the uh, garlic clove, I've got one here with the germ removed. And the, the reason we remove the germ is because otherwise the germ is bitter. It could bring a bitter taste in your preparation. So always remove the germ if there is one. I've uh, weighed my butter and flour and I've made my bouquet garni. Again, parsley stock, thyme, fresh thyme and one or two bay leaves maximum. If you don't have the fresh stuff, you can use just bay leaf and dry thyme. That will work as well. Tomato paste and some tomato. Now we're all ready to start our sauce. And now to the stove and let's start that sauce espanol. So as you can see, this is my setup again. I've got three cups of brown stock. That's the Escoffier stock from last time that I've frozen and I've reheated it simmering gently. And make sure you remove all the scum at the top huh, as it goes with uh, that utensil here, the skimmer. And we're going to start in that pan. I'm using a cast iron pan. And this is the Le Creuset 24 centimeter. And you're going to start by putting your bacon and butter at the bottom of your pan and first melt everything. As you can see my butter is melting slowly and as soon as it's melted with my bacon we're gonna add the carrots and onion. You can do that on a medium heat as we want to have a slight coloration on everything. Eh? So we're gonna leave this for a few minutes until it colors slightly. Mmm, that smell of carrots, onion and bacon is just a one of a kind. I'm telling you, it's typical French cooking, but it's so inviting, like, oh man. So anyway, when there's a bit of um, 
light coloration on there, you take all of your flour and you pour it over because we are going to be making a roux. That's right. So mix everything well and we're going to leave this to cook a little bit. Today we want to make a brown roux. So you put your heat on low to make sure it doesn't burn. And we're going to leave this to cook until it colors again slightly. As soon as your roux is starting to get a bit of a brownish color like that, you're going to add the tomato paste and we're going to cook it for a few minutes to remove the acidity. Now when it comes to the roux guys, if you're not sure on how to make it, I've got a video on that. And so make sure to check it, I'll put a link in the video description on how to make the white blonde and brown roux. How simple was that? Now we've made the base of the Espanol, which is simply uh, a tomato base roux uh, with, with a mere pot of carrots and onions. As you can see, there's just all the, the mix of vegetables. The flour has been roasted, so think roasted flavor. And uh, we've got that brown color from the roux to make sure it goes with the brown sauce. And we keep the, the color coding in French cooking, brown with brown, white with white, depending on what kind of sauce you're making. Next step, we're gonna have to leave this to cool down totally until we can pour the boiling stock into there and start our sauce. While the roux is cooling down, I'm taking the opportunity to show you a little something. Uh, the recipe calls for chopped tomatoes. Huh? So anything French cooking, any French recipe, uh, the, for the proper one, professional one, if they, say, if they call for chopped tomatoes, it's usually without the skin. So here I've got some tomatoes that are uh, less than good looking and they're pretty, pretty bad. So we're going to just blanch them in, in boiling water for a few minutes to remove the skin. So there's a small technique that I'm sure a lot of you already knows and we're not reinventing the wheel, but I thought I'd show for the people that don't know. So you take your tomato, there's two steps. First, you have to remove uh, the pedoncule, uh, the, the bottom here, the base, with your knife. Uh, so you remove this, get that hole, and then you do a little cross on there. Once your tomatoes are ready, take each one and you plunge them in a pot of boiling water for about 10 to 20 seconds. After 20 seconds, you take your tomato out and you plunge it in the icy water. The thermal shock that's going to happen with the cold and the hot is going to basically start to detach all of the skin so that it can be peeled off very easily. And that's the trick. Just to show you a little example, once they're done, look, the skin goes off and with your hand, you can just remove the whole skin and discard it. That's how we skin tomatoes. Finally, once our uh, roux here is cold, we can pour our stock in there. Huh? So you take the boiling stock that we're going to filter over. So there's three cups of brown stock and this is the stock we've made last week. Huh? Remember it was frozen. And I didn't uh, mention guys, but this version of the Espanol sauce is the version being taught in French culinary school, which is not the pure Escoffier version, just to let you know. Huh? So it's based on the Escoffier style, but it's been adapted to take less time. Hmm? So once you pour this in the roux, you're going to put your heat on on high and bring that to the boil. Mm, look at that color. Pretty good. So once uh, the boil is back, you're going to take all of the tomatoes, the bouquet garni uh, in there, the two garlic cloves that we had earlier and the mushroom trimmings and mix everything. And we're going to leave that sauce to cook on a simmer for one and a half to two hours. And as you can see already, the color is nice and tomatoey, but what we want is to really get the taste of the stock again, concentrated with the flavoring of all these additional uh, aromatics. Now remember, you don't put any salt or pepper in such sauces. It's only at the end that you will add the seasoning. This is because every ingredient, like the bacon's got salt, you know, the cow's got some sweetness, the mushroom brings something. So let the vegetables express themselves first and at the end only, then you do the seasoning. So now we leave the sauce on a simmer and we're gonna leave it to cook and reduce for one and a half to two hours with a lid partially on. About two hours later, the sauce is heavily reduced, as you can see, and is really much thicker. So the only thing to do now is to filter this and transfer it into another pan so we can give it the final touch. For the filtering, same as before, fine mesh sieve and you pass everything through. Once your espanol has been transferred, the final touch is a nudge of butter in there. And you're going to slowly incorporate it. So I've put the heat back on. 
Uh, and this is basically your espanol being done. Now, when it's all done, the final of the final touch is to correct the seasoning and I will add a little bit of black pepper and a, a little bit of salt because I've just tasted it and it was lacking a little bit of salt, but not too much. Et voilà, our espanol is now ready. Now, to finish, what can we say about that sauce? Uh, really for me, uh, I'd like to remind you, uh, all of you, if you're working in a culinary school, that this is uh, one of the mother sauces. And a mother sauce is really a sauce that can go from good to great, right? It is a sauce that you use to build upon. Huh? So you can use it in your stews, uh, with meat, with chicken, with beef, uh, or add some herbs in there, or alcohol, spirits, anything to enhance the flavoring. But on its own, you have to remember that it is a base sauce. So the taste is good, and it's a nice brown stock with a tomatoey, bacony kind of intonation to it. But in today's world, you might not be as impressed as what the guys back then, you know, 100 years ago were, because that was the, the best sauce ever, because there was nothing else. So keep this in mind when it comes to mother sauce, they are great. And they can be frozen and reused to enhance other preparation. That's very important. So, I hope you liked the video today. It was instructive enough that you've learned a few things. And next week, if you want to join me, we're going to tackle a uh, forgotten sauce a little bit. And it was part of the great sauces, which is called the sauce American, the American sauce. So, a lot of you may be really pleased and really wonder what is that mysterious sauce. Huh? So, we're going to discover this next Friday. And I hope to see you all then. Have a good day. Bye bye.